<laughs> my dad was the postmaster of Phoenix, but his first job, he was a bricklayer. He built stuff all across Phoenix. Fixtures at St. Agnes Catholic Church, Christie's Cabaret. <laughs> Helped build the main post office. He was just one of the bricklayers on the job. So when he became postmaster, he just would say, I run the building that I built. Look how far he came. Humberto Inigas Trujillo Jr. <laughs> they called him Jr. He was born in Phoenix and he grew up in the Dupa Villa projects. How do I explain the Dupa Villa projects? Most of his friends he grew up with didn't make good life choices. His dad was into drugs and bad things and passed away when he was six years old. My grandfather, so. He had been through a lot. Thrift stores, food stamps, raised by a single mom. But my dad is a comedian and he makes everything a joke. So like when we say, we'll see you later, he's like, yeah, that's what my dad said and then I never saw him again. And that was my dad. Sarcastic and kind of a smart ass. <laughs> I think that's what got him through. He was a really good athlete, naturally. Baseball, basketball, football. Even played football for a year at Phoenix College, but just didn't work out. He always felt like he was not book smart. He felt like if I was just smarter, that was the big motivator for him. Like, you're going to college, like our whole life. Like, you're going to college no matter what. You're gonna be the first graduate from college. He met my mom when he was 14 and she was 11. Yeah. <laughs> my. Mom's family really took my dad in. He was always at her house. And you can see it, because we have the pictures. Like, he's always with them. He got married young. <laughs> my grandfather had just started his own masonry business. And so my dad and his brother-in-laws were certified bricklayers, and they went into that line of work. Safety, precision. When he did brickwork, it had to be perfect. It's the fundamentals that matter. Laying the foundation is key. If you don't do it right, it'll fall. I think he was 26, maybe. He was pretty young when it happened. And the walls was like five and a half feet, pure brick, but some of them did something wrong. And the wall fell over onto his leg and tore something in his knee. He was devastated. He was going to be a foreman and then maybe have his own construction company someday. But after that, he was like, no, I'm done. At that time, my mom was a mail carrier. My dad was like, I could do that. So he took the test and then he became a mail handler in the night shift processing mail. Being so ambitious, you could see like his wheels are turning boisterous personality and everybody likes him. He's funny, he talks to everyone. So people would be like, have you ever considered management? I could do that. And so he became a supervisor and operational manager. But if somewhere was struggling, he'd go in and help. Washington, D.C., New Mexico, Colorado. I can just hear him talking to managers at stations, like rain or shine. Doesn't matter. You have gotta make sure that the mail gets out. There were times, like, I know in my early, like, adulthood, I hated the post office. He was always on night shifts and out of town a lot. Got to deliver the mail. That's just how it goes. They got divorced, like, two or three years later. The truth is infidelity. He met people at work, so... I was team mom, so that was a lot of our conflict. When I graduated from college, he almost didn't come. But I'm really glad he did. Because you could tell, and even in the pictures, it's a really proud moment for him. Like, she's living the dream I originally had. And the thing with my dad is really, it's hard not to like him and like get along with him. You can be mad at him for so long, but. What the hell am I doing out here? Huh, does anybody know? I'm trying to get my way to church and it's snowing so hard, everything's jacked up, man. Just thought I'd share that Sunday morning with you. He can win you back over. He's really good at that.
One day he called me in the morning and he saw me, huh? I got it. I got this job. I'm the first Hispanic postmaster. I'll run the whole show here. And he even had mariachis there because I'm gonna make sure I have my culture represented well. And that was my dad. Great day of my life. I wanna say thank you to everybody. Thank you. He was the postmaster of Phoenix. Topping our news this half hour, a somber ceremony earlier today. A procession through the streets of Phoenix to remember postmaster Humberto Jr. He had Pedro. such a fighting Pedro. spirit, like I thought, because he was so stubborn, like he's not gonna let this virus beat him. Not this guy, he like fights for everything. Nothing beats him. At that time, no one could go to the hospital. You're not allowed in. So they had three nurses in there. Two of them held his hand and another one sang Amazing Grace as he passed. Um, the post office here in Arizona put the flag at half mast in his honor. And the procession, they led us by the main post office, the building he built. just showed, like, you really can't do anything you put your mind to. Hi, this is Ben Proudfoot, the director and producer of Cause of Life. Leave your comment below and tell us what's on your mind. Do you know somebody like Junior, or do you want to leave a note for his family? If there's one thing I've learned making this series, it's that on the other side of America's loss is an even greater shared profit from the contributions the victims of this virus made during their storied lifetimes. So stay tuned for the next episode of Cause of Life.